the psoas and the glutes have to work well together in order for us to have healthy and comfortable movement in our hips. For many of us, especially for those who experience chronic hip pain, these muscles have lost their ability to communicate and function well together. In today's video, I'm going to share an exercise that you're probably already familiar with, but we're going to do it with a very different intention. And because of this new intention, I'm confident that you're going to feel and learn some new things in this exercise. And even more importantly, you're going to get those glutes and psoas muscles working better together. To set up this exercise, we want to be sure that the knees are aligned with the hips and that the wrists are aligned with the shoulders. So we have this nice aligned tabletop position. And from there, when most people do the cat-cow exercise, they focus a lot on the spine. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but we're going to do things a little bit differently. We want to start the movement from our hips and we want to pay special attention to what the hips are doing. So going into this tucked rounded position, we want to engage the glutes and start the movement at the hips and pelvis and then slowly move up vertebrae by vertebrae until we get to the neck. And then when we go into the other position, we want to use our hip flexors, which are the muscles at the crease of the hip to arch, to, to bring the pelvis more forward, arch the low back, and then slowly extend the rest of the spine. So the spine's almost coming along for the ride as opposed to being the main driver of the movement. And two things we want to pay attention to here is first, which position is more difficult for you? Is it harder to engage the glutes and tuck the pelvis? Or is it harder to engage the hip flexors, roll the pelvis forward and arch the spine? This is going to give you some insight on what kind of exercises will be helpful for you and where you should put your focus on. The second thing I want you to pay attention to is, is it difficult to contract the hip flexors when you go into that anterior tilt? For many people, this muscle group is kind of sleepy and it may be difficult to bring that mind muscle connection. And similarly, what's going on when you tuck the pelvis? Can you get those glutes to engage when you're going into that posterior tilt? This tells us a lot about what's going on with your hips and it could give you a lot of insight and direction on where you should put your focus on during exercise. So let's do a few more reps here. We got about 40 seconds or so. And we don't want to use the move the head or the spine before we move the hips, right? So really think about tucking and arching at the pelvis before the spine, neck or head get involved. And for many people, it takes some time to get used to this type of variation or with this kind of special attention on what's going on at the hips. So take your time, be patient. Don't be frustrated if it doesn't happen right away. Just kind of stick with it and trust that your body will eventually figure it out. If you found that exercise helpful, hit that like button, smack that subscribe button. It goes a long way for me to keep bringing you quality content. That's all I got for today. I'll see you in the next one. Happy hips.